Welcome to Mark's Madness. Mark, it's the final Mark's Madness of 2014, if you can believe it. Joined, as always, by Mark Shine. I'm, Mar I'm Matt Finkel. And it's early on in the season, but a lot of great action throughout the past week. And let's start with any major surprises for you. Well, I'm not sure that any real surprises, Matt. I know one of the things we can look at is Kyle Ahrens came back to play at Versailles. I mean, we weren't sure exactly when that was going to occur. Good to see Kyle back on the floor, double-figure score, going to Michigan State, makes their team a lot better. Good to see him back on the floor. He's going to be a big piece of that Versailles team playing in the MAC this year. And like you said, we, we knew he was dealing with a foot injury, missed most of last year, if not all of last year. So good to see him back on the floor. And, and what does he bring to that team that, that really changes the dynamic? Well, A, he can score. And in this league and in the way people play today, you've got to be able to score. He scores the basketball, but he also passes it. He defends. He's 6'5". He can get those exciting plays, the three-point field goal, the dunk. He makes their defense better. He's one of those guys that makes everybody else better. They still have Bargy back with them and a few other guys, McEldany. So they've got some other guys who can play. They may well be the favorite in the Mac, although it's way too early to pick that out yet, particularly with the way St. Henry's playing right now. Yeah, very early and tough to right. figure out who's where, but that'll all play itself out. Surprise for me, kind of on the negative side, is, is what Elida has done early, and it's, it's a little bit disappointing seeing how successful they were last year. Obviously, they lost a lot of guys, and I know Coach Thompson is, is doing the best he can to, to keep that program where it was, but not a great start for the Bulldogs. Well, obviously, there are some problems there. They graduated a tremendous amount. You lose a Dakota Mathias and some of the other guys they lost, but also they have some injury situations. You know, Allmeyer's been out. He tried to play in the tip-off, did not play last weekend trying to get that ankle of his back to where it belongs. Jason Sarno's not playing. He probably was penciled in as the point guard when the season began. He's not playing due to a foot injury. I think Coach really needs to get his guys healthy. They got some scoring out of you know, Josh Press last weekend. Uh, they got some scoring out of Howell last weekend. So they got some things that are coming together. It's just going to take a while with all the injuries. Dakota Mathias starting at Purdue the yeah. last couple of games. I like to see that. That's exciting for the you know, Elida What's graduate. really interesting about him, through the first seven games, as a freshman, he had 12 assists and two turnovers. As a freshman, that's, that's, great. That's, that's really great. They were 6-1 at the time. I haven't checked his stats lately. But that's really from tremendous ball handling skills and knowledge of the game. Disciplined basketball yeah, from absolutely. Dakota. And we saw that at Elida, and not surprised that it's continuing right. at Purdue. So Elida, a rough start in the WBL, but three teams in the WBL stand out to me. Tell me if I'm wrong here. I see yeah. Defiance, OG, and Salina, all with chances to make deep postseason runs. And my question to you is, who is best built for that deep postseason run? Well, that's a really interesting thing because you can make an argument for each team. Uh, you know, I was going to kind of leave Defiance out when you mix those three together. Yes, they have Singleton, but I wasn't sure they had enough pieces to go with it. But they've been in the regionals right lately, and Coach knows what he's doing up there, Coach Lehman. He knows what he's doing, how to put a team together. That may well be a team that I really didn't think about early on, but, but they may be there. The other two, Salina and OG. Salina with all that, those guys coming back. Um, tremendous amount of experience. They played very well against Lima Senior, hung a 30-point quarter on the Spartans the other night. I think they really have a chance to go deep in the year. And then, of course, along with that OG. Noah Bramblage, the guy who can score for you inside and out, be a leader, a lot of experience, and then they're just blessed with athletes. They're making a lot of things happen with their defense, getting up and down the floor. They have the tradition of being OG, a coach that knows how to win a state tournament. I think those two teams, Sly and OG, probably out of the three. Tyson McLaughlin was excited about the guys that he was getting from the JV team. They had such a talented JV team last year. Now they're on the varsity squad, and OG really can make some noise. You know, I, I, this will sound really cruel, and I don't mean it that way, but they had some seniors last year that they needed to let them play and have their senior year, but they had that class of underclassmen, sophomores and so on, who were so talented that when those seniors moved on, those guys could move up and play. They're skillful, but they're also very athletic. They run, they jump, they're quick, they make things happen. It's a really interesting thing at OG right now. It's a good problem to have. I mean, oh. too much talent across, spread across too small of grades, you know, over right. junior to senior, sophomore to junior. It's, you know, I like to spread it out a little more. And, and Tyson Glock is the type of guy who can play a lot of guys. So he'll get a lot of guys involved. If you're not having a good night, there's somebody sitting over here who will have one. And the one consistent, of course, is Ken Bramlage be that consistent 18 to 20 point game score and 8 to 10 rebound a guy for him. If he does that for him with all the other things they have, it's a good basketball team. So back to Salina now for a second. A lot of interest in that game against Lima Senior. Huge crowd at, yep. at Lima Senior High, and it's a great game. Oh, tremendous game. Yep. Salina comes out with the loss. It's their first loss of the season. Lima Senior, meanwhile, almost started 0-3. This was a really big win for them, and we saw them do a lot of good things. We're actually going to take a look at a couple of plays from that game a little later on 
in the show. But what did you like out of Lima Senior? And, and their backs were a little bit against the wall in that, again, it's so early, but you don't want to start 0-3, especially with all the new pieces they're, they're, they have going on there. Well, I think the first thing was they came off an, an overtime loss on Friday night to an important league game. So they came out a little bit slow defensively Saturday night. They gave up 30 points in the first quarter to a good Salina team. I think Coach Simpson got their attention between quarter breaks because their middle two quarters of defense was very, very good. If there was a concern for them, the thing I would be worried about against Wapak, against Salina, when they got that lead in the fourth quarter, they seemed to back off a little bit and say, come out and, and pressure us. We're going to make free throws, a couple layups, and win the game. And the game turned around again right. and went towards their opponent. It cost them at Wapak. Salina did the same type of thing, never got to the point where they actually got ahead, but made a run at them. I think they need to be a little bit more, we got the athletes, let's continue to play. And if not, then we need to you know, be a little bit more judicious about when we go to that delay game. Yeah, playing with a lead is always tricky in high school basketball since there's no shot clock. You can conceivably hold the ball for as long as you want, really, if you're able to do so. But then also you got to make your free throws. So. It, it's a really, it's a, it's really catch-22, particularly in high school basketball, because the, when you're able to control the pace of the game and make your free throws and layups and, and defend a little bit, but if it gets away from you, it's tough to turn it back on again once you've turned that momentum down. Absolutely. So who else do we like in the track? Well, the track is kind of a wide open situation. Toledo Central Catholic hasn't played yet. Their first game will be with Springfield this weekend. Now, Springfield's 3-1, and one, so they play Saturday night. That's an interesting matchup. They did not play their league game with Fremont Ross that they should have played last week, again, because of their football playoffs. And they're not playing Lima Senior this week, which is kind of a hole in the Spartan schedule and will cause them to jam a game in, in the middle of January, on January 20th. So we don't really know what's going on there, but I think, obviously, uh, the, the top team right now is Toledo St. John's. A big win at Lima Senior, but there are still 13 games left to play. Finley's having trouble scoring points. They seem to be solid defensively. The rest of the things are kind of up in the air right now. On to the Northwest Central Conference, an interesting conference. And when you look at this, you'll call a game this week. Right. We'll give you our full broadcast schedule later on, but you'll call a game this week between Upper Soda Valley and Temple Christian. Upper Soda Valley, 2-0 and on the young season, and they had a good season last year as well. And could make some noise this year. I would agree with that, Matt. They have a good point guard in Lane Hurley. He handles the basketball, but he can also score the ball. He's done very well. And then Coach Kleffer has done a really good job of getting a lot of different guys in scoring positions. He's one of those guys who says, if we have a matchup in the low post, we're going to exploit it. If we have a matchup on the wing, we're going to exploit it. He does a very, very good job with that. Bruce Bowman, on the other hand, at Temple Christian, I think is one of the best basketball coaches in our area. Small number of boys in the school, always puts a quality product out there. I really like what Coach does. He'll have his hands full this week, though, with USV. Mark Shine knows his thing or two about good coaching. So <laughs> when he says he's a good coach, you should listen to what he's saying. Time for a break here on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to take down, we're going to put Mark to work, actually, and take a look at a couple of plays from the Bath OG girls game and then into that Salina Lima senior boys game. You don't want to miss it. Stay, to you. Stay right here. Welcome back to Mark's Madness. Time to break down a play now. We're going to look at a couple of different plays, but let's start with the girls game. Bath and OG, a big one in the Western Buckeye League. And you notice something about the Bath defense that seems to be pretty tough for other teams to figure out. Well, most teams, when they run their 2-2-1 press, they use a goalie deep. So they actually press with four players. But it's a safe type thing. Bath doesn't do that. They put their point guard deep. They ask four other players to be involved with their press. You can see Bree Smith at 6-1 is at midcourt. You can see big bodies up in front. So they've got five different players that are involved in the press. It's going to result in a steal right there by Bree Smith. There's a foul that takes place right after it. Uh, our next play that kind of goes right along with that, here's those four players up front with the point guard deep. And what's going to happen is there's a pass. They're going to go through the press, but in such a hurry that they turn the basketball over, the point guard makes a swipe at the ball, and the ball gets turned over. So they use five players in their press and not just four with a goalie. Very interesting, and it's effective for Bath. Now let's go to that Lima Senior Salina game and check out this play by the Spartans that results in a Jalen Thomas layup. Well, this is dribble drive penetration motion. You see the point guard comes across Simpson, makes the kick out, but then what I like right here, square up, triple threat position, ball fake, beat the defender, and go to the goal. That was a tremendous ball fake. You guys are always showing those highlights of dunks. That's a highlight play for me right there. Absolutely a highlight <laughs> play. And here's another highlight play by the Spartans, and it came on the very next possession. Check out the passing. Tremendous zone offense. The pass high, the pass low before the defense can react. Not everybody has a Rico Stafford who can finish in it with a dunk like that, but the passing is outstanding. One, two, three, back cut and score. That's really well done by the Spartans. And in a close game, 
And that'll always ignite the team, right? In a three-point game, you get a back play like that in a score, whether it's a dunk or just a layup, that's a big play. Well, thank you, Mark. Great job as always. I learned a lot about that bath zone. Looking forward to watching that throughout the rest of the season. Time for another break here on Mark's Madness. When we come back, we're going to talk NWC, PCL, BBC, and tell you what games you can watch on the West Ohio Sports Network this weekend. Welcome back to Mark's Madness. We're talking high school hoops with Mark Shine. Mark, let's talk about the Northwest Conference and another interesting conference and very early on in the season, but we got to like what we see out of Bluffton at 4-0. Bluffton's 4-0, a little bit unusual, I think. We didn't expect Coach Boblet to have such a good product early in the season. I know it's easy to say, well, they've only defeated one team with a winning record, that being Macomb, who's 2-1, and one, so we haven't really seen the best but of their But remember, schedule. they trailed in that game. They did and came back, and, and they have a, a style they like to play. It's somewhat slow. They take care of the ball. They're deliberate. They score, uh, and then they get into a good defensive set. So Alt's playing well for them. They've got good balance from some other guys, so I think Coach Bob is doing a good job. We're going to find out, though, you know, they have Wapak. They don't play a league game this week. They have Wapak on the 23rd. That's an interesting matchup. Then they go into their own holiday tournament over the break. What about Delphus Jefferson? They have a scorer in Trey Smith. They do. But there's two real things. You talk about uh, Smith. Uh, he's a coach's son, obviously, so he's been around the game forever. Um, he's got great form on his shot, can score inside and out. He just knows the basketball game like a lot of guys. But the other thing that we forget about that is Jay Stockwell is scoring with him. And when you have two guys that can score, that mm -hmm. really puts the pressure on the defense. And anything else you get out of those other guys, if you get four, six, eight points out of your other guys and two really good scores, you've got a good basketball team. They play Grove this weekend. That's an interesting matchup in the conference. Grove only hasn't played yet because of their football success that they had. So it'll be an interesting matchup for Jefferson this week. Who do you like in that conference? And there's a lot of good juniors in this conference. So this could be a really good basketball conference, not only this year, but next year. Yeah, it really is. You know, the, the conference has the best record in our area out of league. They're 16 and nine is the Northwest Conference and out of league play. So that's really kind of an interesting stat to throw out at, uh, at that. Obviously, in Spencerville, Crestview, those are the guys we talk about being at the top. Paulding lost a couple games last week, now to pretty good opponents. So they're two and two now. Obviously, we have to throw Bluffton and Jefferson in there. But it's kind of a wide open situation. Ada won their opening game. We don't know a lot about Ada yet, but they won their opening game, so they're 1-0, and oh, and we just need to kind of let that thing start to fill itself out this week. In the MAC, we already talked about Versailles a little at the beginning of the show, and St. Henry definitely looks like a contender. Is there anybody else that you're looking at in that league? Early on, of course, obviously, you know, Coldwater and, and Mary Local and Minster haven't played yet, and Coldwater and Mary Local are actually going to open the season with each other this Friday night, which is kind of an interesting way to do that. And then Minster has St. Henry, and that's a load for them to play this weekend. But we don't know what those three teams have exactly. So if we're going to look at another team, let's look at Delphi St. John's. They're 2-0 and right now with wins over Crestview and Elida. They go to Fort Recovery this weekend. It's been kind of up and down. They've been able to score with Grothaus and then play solid defense for Aaron Elwer. I'm kind of interested to see how the, the Blue Jays play the rest of the year out. Yeah, the Blue Jays definitely could make some noise in the MAC, and remember Marion Local, pretty good postseason run last year as well. So we should look out yeah. for them. Don't forget about them just because exactly. they haven't played yet. A, with, a lot of football. size at Marion Local, and when their guard play is consistently good with all the size they have, and they know how to win because of their success in other sports, kind of rest to see how they play. Putnam County League and the Blanchard Valley Conference, let's touch on those really quickly. Great game in the Putnam County League earlier this week, and Kaleida and Pandora Gilboa. Buzzer beating three. Hope you can catch it on WOSN at some point. They're in a re-air this week. Buzzer beating three for the Wildcats, and they're off to 1-0 start in the Putnam County League. What, what, what can we expect out of this uh, PCL? Yeah, well, Collide is pretty good, obviously, with Cordocrats, but they're, they're, they're a young team, not yes. a lot of experience. I think he and, and Robke, they're only seniors, and Robke's not hurt now, as, as you pointed out to me, since you called that game. So not a lot of experience, but Corch Cordocrats always gets his team to play well, particularly solid defensively. I think Ottoville's off to a good start. Um, I'm not really sure where we stand on the rest of those teams. You know, Lipsick has, is, I think they're one and one or one and two right now. We're not sure what they've got. Columbus Grove hasn't played yet, but, but Coach Stexall does a good job up there. So we just need to let things filter out in, the, in that particular conference. For Pandora Gilboa, a lot of freshmen on this team, and they got to be excited about the performance. They're one yeah. and two on the year, right. and they had a two point win over Corey Rawson earlier last week. But Basically, seven freshmen contributed in this game. A lot of size, and I think they're on to something there. There's something to be said in sports about youthful enthusiasm. Absolutely. Yep. Well, speaking of youthful enthusiasm, we'll have plenty of that at all the games we attend this week for you. And we've got 
a handful of rebroadcast games. So let's run through the rebroadcast schedule. Mark, you stop me and let me know where you're going to be. Okay. Starts Friday at 10.30 p.m. on WOSN Parkway versus New Bremen in a MAC matchup. Friday on WTLW at 10.44, immediately following the sports report, Defiance versus Elida, Western Buckeye League contest. That's where I'll be, not in person, but to catch it on TV. I want to see the two Bulldogs, especially Defiance. Yeah, that's going to yep. be a good one to watch. Saturday, there's four games for you. Start 7.30 on WOSN with USV Temple, and I think that's, that's where you're going to be, right? Yeah, I get to call, right? yep. right. get to call that game with Mark be. Miller. So that'll be exciting. 9 p.m. Saturday on WOSN, Ada versus Crestview. 10.30 Saturday on WOSN, LCCOG. That is a good matchup. A tremendous matchup. Looking forward to that. There's two teams that have experience and athletes and guys that can play. That's a really interesting matchup. 10.30 on Saturday, WTLW after the sports report, St. Mary's versus Coldwater. And then one game for you on Sunday evening, 7.30, Ridgemont versus Harden Northern. You'll be there? I'll be there. You'll We're be there. We're to figure All out right. whether that's a conference game or not. We know that Hard Northern is going into the Northwest Central Conference. Right. They're still trying to play a BVC schedule, but I was over at Hard Northern earlier this year, and they said we're trying to play as many NWCC schools as we can, so we'll see if it counts as a league game or not. Yeah, that'll be interesting. You'll have to find out. Look and then forward to it. Watch that game back on WOSN. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Be sure to check back. I know we've got all these early season games. We're trying to figure it out. By the time we return in January, we'll have a lot more answers for you. So be sure to tune in for that. That's going to do it. We'll see you next time on WOSN.